today I will be continuing my videos related to unfinished houses and I am going to be highlighting another house in the Cornwall region. Now, for the persons who are wondering why I do videos that span across different topics and they are done randomly, it's because I have a playlist. The playlist actually is where I sort most of these videos because there are several topics that I want to touch on but I cannot touch them in a consistent manner. Sometimes I might have to break from one to go to the other. So all of these unfinished houses are coming in the playlist that says unfinished buildings in Jamaica. So going back, I am going to be displaying this house, which is a house that I knew from when I was a child. And it's kind of surprising to me that the house is in the same format. This house, though the place look laced with greenery, is actually at the edge of a main road. And that's why this is a bad look because as you're driving past, it's on your way from Montego Bay to Negril, you'll see this humongous house built up and there's no look of it being finished anytime soon. Now, this is the main road that's coming down, so you can see that it is the A1 road, which is the main, and over here is the ocean, so it's not that far from the sea. Now, looking at it, from the top here, I can kind of get a few indicators. This seems to be a bedroom with possibly a closet and a bathroom that's in this area. Almost sure that is what that is. Um, this looks like some type of storage or etc. This is the general living area. I've never seen a house with a small opening to look downstairs. I've seen, you know, large one, but this one is rather strange. Over this side, we'd have an additional bedroom. You can see it's a bathroom with a closet. And then there's two other bedrooms with bathrooms and closet also. Now, if I was to use my experience to check this, I can say this room is about 12. Let us just say these three are 12 apiece. That's 36 feet. Um, by the time I put it in the wall, that's 37. That's going to be 38. And if I was to use experience again, I would say this is 12. This is about 7. That's 19. Um, let me try to use my calculator in this instance. That's 38 times 12. 7. That's 19. This is another 12. That's 31. This looks like about 6. That's 37. Then there looks like another 12 here. That's going to be 49. And we are going to use this as 6 again. Which brings us to 55. Now by the time we add these walls. These two walls are going to make it 56. These two walls are going to make it 57. These two walls are going to make it 58. And uh, one wall is going to make it another half. So it's 58.5 is the unit that we are using. So 58.5. And that would be saying... Based on rough estimates, the building by itself is on one floor is 2,223 square feet. If I was to add the porch in it, I think I can get maybe another 80 to 100 square feet. Um, if I was to go 12 by 8, that's going to be 96. Let us just use 80 to be on the safe side for this porch. That's what we are getting on one floor. Based on rough estimations, I am going to try to show some more pictures from different sides so you can see that it's pretty much the same building that's upstairs is downstairs. So let me go again. This is an entrance from the back porch. As you can see, most of the things line up, the bathroom line up, these windows kind of line up. I cannot say exactly what's in the lower floor, but I can say it's pretty much the same size at the floor above. Yes, I'm going to use the same square footage for upstairs and downstairs. So I have to multiply this by 2. So that's saying roughly 4,606 square feet. And a lovely piece of land that's actually sitting around like waste for some good time now. So yeah, and a lovely piece of land on the main road. Ideal location to do a lot of business and to take advantage of any potential that would come this way but instead it sits here i cannot really get into that on my channel because i don't like to do too much speculation i try to keep it at a point where 
I control s- certain narratives and I am pretty sure what the situation is. I will do that for things that related to construction that I can tell you definitively that, that this is the situation. So let me go back to my Excel and I am going to find a section that says Cornwall. Now, the time that this was built was some while back. Whatever cost is being projected now is related to the market at present. But when this was being built, it was at a time when things were not as expensive. So let me put that in. I'm going to say Hanover again. I'm trying to keep most of these in order instead of putting them all over the place. So this is going to be Cousins Cove. I think I'm going to put the square footage that I rough checked. Where was it? 4,606. So I'm going to add it to right here. I am going to use the current day rate that I used before because I'm doing a comparison. I'm going to multiply the square footage by the rate that I'm using currently. That would be saying at bare minimum for the rough structure as it is now, it's looking at a bare minimum of about $39 million. Uh, I think, based on where that is, in this present day, if you were to try that, maybe $39 million would not carry that far. So I'm just going to add that to my calculations. I'm going to use a assumed value that's highlighted. I always, I'm going to use a value that's below the value that I am projecting because that's how valuators actually work. They are never going to work at the rate that you think they are working at. To match up what is on the ground, it's a matter of what the perceived value will be. So let me look back at my summary. And at present, I'm at 1 billion 93. I have another interesting unfinished house that I want to carry to this channel. It's just that I've not gotten the time to take the pictures for it. It's much bigger than this. I think maybe a minimum of twice this size. Um, between now to the next two or three days, I should have it in. But this is where I'm going to leave it for now. 1,093,000. Sorry about that. I actually made a mistake. It's actually 1,093,000. $336,600. That's the actual figure. And I actually said it wrong a minute ago. But whenever this discussion keep popping up about what to do and what not to do and etc. People try to ignore the fact that many people have done and failed. They are always going to look at the positive side. It's just like doing a business, you know. Many times people that are going into business, they are looking at the positives only. They don't look at the negatives or, you know, they don't, they overlook, I think is the right term, the potential means of failure. So they are always looking at the success, what the business can do, not what are the obstacles that the business will face and how to actually deal with these, these obstacles. And that's why the average business fail, just like how many persons in construction fail. I personally believe that there was, if there was a better system, you would have more finished houses. But that would take a lot. And with the people that run construction-related oversight bodies locally, most of them don't know how to actually build a system. So anyway, this is your lovely house. Um, if you know the owner, you can go and ask them if they want you to finish it. But for me, it's just another embarrassment.